The Cube presents Ignite 22. Brought to you by Palo Alto Networks. Hey guys, girls, welcome back. It's The Cube, live in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand for Palo Alto Networks Ignite 22. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. Dave, we've had some great conversations. This is day one of two days of Cube coverage. We're talking with Palo Alto executives, their partner network, their customers. Going to be learning a lot about what they've been doing to really be that golden nugget. Yeah, we've talked, Lisa, about how Palo Alto Networks is affecting a TAM expansion strategy through acquisitions and integration, and the company CDW that I remember, you know, been around a long time. I remember back in the Comdex days, talk about a transformation <laughs> of a company, really excited to have them on. We're going to talk about that. Stephanie Hagopian is here, the VP of Security at CDW. Stephanie, it's hey. great to have you on the program. It's so nice to be here, thank you. So lots going on. CDW has made several acquisitions in the past couple of quarters alone as it relates to security. Talk to us about what's going on. Yes, so we are way more than the computer warehouse that you used to know, the computer catalog days, we've moved <laughs> beyond that. Um, we've made a lot of strategic acquisitions in the past several quarters. The reason for that is we're trying to change our image and our brand and how, more importantly, we engage with our customers and security. Um, we used to traditionally be you know, kind of at the end of the procurement cycle with our customers and we want to be an advisor. Um, we want to really sell solutions and help influence um, the outcomes that our clients are trying to achieve when it comes to not just security, but also risk, governance, threat and vulnerability management. How are they dealing with major issues around zero trust and building a zero trust framework for a company? And I imagine these acquisitions that really, from a catalyst perspective, was really driven yeah. by the customers and what they were Absolutely. wanting to see and feel and hear and be able to do. Absolutely, so the acquisitions have given us over 400 delivery resources, consultants, advisors, people who can actually engage with our clients who have real life experience, have worked with global organizations, some of the biggest companies in the world in order to solve their problems and using that experience to be able to, to really create a higher value you know, as we interact and engage. You were telling us, Stephanie, that you actually came into CDW through an acquisition. I and did. I think if you go back 10 years ago when the cloud was just sort of hitting its steep, steep ramp, it, looked, yeah. it was pretty obvious. And at the same time, you had what we affectionately call you know, box sellers. And it was very yeah. clear that if they didn't transform their businesses, and they, you know, they, a lot of them are small regional companies. They had, the owners had big houses and big boats but the companies were going to go away if they yeah. didn't transform. So it's interesting to me that you've chosen security and governance and some of the really most difficult areas to, as part of that transformation. Where did that come from from your perspective and you know, why security and why such challenging areas? Well, I've been part of security in the security industry for over 20 years and I've loved the fact it is challenging. It's what, uh, it's what uh, makes us so important and critical to our clients. Security is not an easy problem to solve. Um, and it, it's because the landscape keeps changing. The advent of cloud and now hybrid infrastructure creates endless challenges for our customers. Threat actors change. We have insider threats. We have external threats. There's all sorts of risk when you talk about third parties and how third parties interact with organizations, we have supply chain management, and now that we've moved into this hybrid work environment of virtual, not virtual, you know, we have people kind of engaging within organizations in different ways, there's just a lot of risk associated with that. It's not easy, and you have to engage with stakeholders across the entire organization. You have to understand how legal thinks of this, and compliance, and HR, it's not just an IT issue, it's right. a business issue. Um, and we understand that, and it's just, it's so interesting for us to engage with our customers on critical initiatives and security is at the top of the list. It's not just a, a CISO or even a CIO problem anymore. Boards care about this. Right. We make or break companies with cybersecurity and risk strategies. That's why it's so critical. So we consider ourselves to be a high priority for every single organization, big or small. Mm -hmm. From a security perspective, what's the common denominator among industries that you're seeing? Oh, I mean, we see, in terms of common denominator, I think um, every single organization is contending with ransomware, uh, that's probably number one, breaches, you know, how do you prevent um, bad actors from uh, doing something you know, that's threatening to information sensitive data, especially consumer data. Third party risk is a big topic. Um, and how to secure hybrid cloud infrastructures, which is a key part of you know, Palo's 
strategy as well, um, and we realize that. Why do they buy from CDW? Yeah. Pitch me, I'm a customer, what can you do for me? Yeah, because we want to partner. So we, we provide true advisory and consulting services to our customers. We aren't there just to make a sale and walk away. We want long-term commitments and long-term partnerships with our customer base. We're there to, to give them outcomes, right, and to align to their priorities and their challenges. Um, it's, it's not a one and done for us. This is about a long-term partnership, um, and that's what makes us so different. And we're now, through the acquisition strategies, we're the largest security integrator in North America in terms of our revenue and our size, just our sheer size and capability and the amount of full-time employees we have dedicated to this part of our business. So they know they can trust us and that we can scale. Do you, is, is it a, a teach me how to fish strategy or is it also if, yeah. if you want to have, if I, if I as a customer want to have you continue to manage or at least provide some kind of managed services, where's the, the line? Yeah, so drawn? we're incredibly unique in the way we've built out our security practice in that we, we do both. And we want our clients to understand that there are going to be elements of what they do that they want to keep in-house from a security perspective. That is why, and it also came from an acquisition, we have a workforce development team for security. Um, we actually are a Palo authorized training partner, and we're incredibly proud of that fact because we don't just want to configure technology, we want to enable our customers to enhance and maintain their investments with Palo and with all technologies, with all of security. Um, at the same time, we know they can't do everything in-house. And that it just might make more sense to do manage through us, so we have end-to-end -end managed capabilities as well, and we continue to enhance that part of our business. So, so a, lot of, a lot of opportunities for customers there. Talk a little bit about the Palo Alto Network's extension of the value prop that you just talked about. Oh yes, we love, you know, Palo is uh, taking a platform approach and really focusing on helping customers rationalize their IT infrastructure around security, we're doing the same exact thing. And focusing on zero trust is huge. We're, we're having those conversations with our customers as well. We want them to take their Palo investment and try to create a platform approach because there's simplicity and cost savings in that. Um, the security conversation is becoming a CFO conversation, right? Um, we love rationalizing those technology investments in a way that makes sense, and we're right in line with Palo in that we want to provide those capabilities end to end, um, and we want to uh, ensure they integrate and use that all of the capabilities within your platform um, to the extent of that investment, right? We want them to use everything and not just parts of the technology or just do a partial deployment. We want them to use everything that uh, it functionally is available to them through that investment. Nikesh in his keynote this morning said the answer is not just more people. I know there's this, this, this gap between the number of required, number of cyber professionals that we need and, and oh, yeah. how many employees we have, et cetera, et cetera. However, <laughs> you just can't get there overnight, so that's where service providers you know, come in. Huge. I saw a stat recently, I think it said 50% of organizations in North America don't have a SOC. That's true. Okay, so they, they need managed services. So they do. what are you seeing with some of the small and mid-sized companies? Managed. And, and, yeah. and how, does, how, is that, how is that going? We're entering a new era with, yeah. with you know, cloud can, can be a, a great help um, and, and reduce the IT load internally. Yeah. What, what's the dynamic like in the yeah. customer base? Smaller customers especially, they just can't attract the cyber talent. Um, it's a high demand field because there just aren't many people who have that capability, right? Um, for us, providing managed, a managed SOC is huge. Uh, one of our key acquisitions, Sirius, it was our largest acquisition recently, uh, brought us a 24-7 managed SOC capability. And that's exactly what our mid-sized customers want and demand and what they need and it's more cost effective and now they don't have to worry about being a security business. That's not what they are. They need to run their businesses um, and that's what we provide through managed capabilities, especially for that customer base in particular. And, and, oh. How about the really small customers, right? Who, who you know, they're in some ways the most vulnerable, yeah, right? And they, ways, they don't have yeah. the budgets, they're kind of working hand to mouth. How, how do you help yeah. them? Yeah, so we, um, we provide cost effective managed capabilities, so there's managed for enterprise, there's managed for mid-market, but then for small, medium businesses, they want something that is at the right price point, 
and that's what we're doing actually in code development with Palos. That's why we're expanding not just our professional services capabilities with the Palo platform, but also providing managed support for every aspect of the platform so that customers don't need to invest in full-time employees to do that. They, can, they have a uh, predictable cost model that's affordable that they can leverage over time. So we're very intent on making sure we're fulfilling that, not just for our big customers, but also for SMB, and our and small businesses as well. So you really have that whole suite the taken whole care suite. of. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the, the large enterprises for a second. I saw a survey recently that, mm -hmm. you know, you talked about security as a board level conversation. It Very is. We so. talk about that all the time, uh, a CFO conversation. But the survey that I saw recently was that there's not there's lack of alignment on boards with the executive suite where security is concerned. Are you seeing that? And how can CDW and the Palo Alto partnership help gain that important yeah. alignment? So we, we face this all the time. What's on the CISO whiteboard might not be on the CFO's whiteboard or the, uh, the board's whiteboard, right? Um, we love, and this is the whole part of our strategy and our strategy partnering with Palo is that we want to engage further up on the, on the cycle. The, you know, we don't want to, to talk to them at the end of the purchasing cycle because we're not providing value. Yeah. We want to help advise them and build the business case, and by them I mean our CISOs, our you know, uh, the heads of network security, you know, there are various stakeholders that we want to engage with to help them build the business case and the justification so that they are speaking the same language as the board member or the CFO. And we do that in many ways. Uh, I think the biggest is that we've, uh, we've built a global security strategy office that encompasses practitioners. So these are former CISOs, CIOs, CTOs who have sat in their shoes and done what they've done, and we bring that experience to bear, coincidentally, but not so coincidentally, Palo has the same capabilities, so Palo's uh, also has a team of field CISOs and former practitioners, so we're partnering together to make sure that we're enabling our customers um, in, in providing the right value statements and the, the right ROI within the, the board meetings so that they get that investment. Right, and they're able to do what they need to do to secure the infrastructure. I mean, historically, the business case has been, we're going to help you not get breached and you're going to yeah. reduce your, your, your still, loss. And, still relevant. And, 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 I'm, and it's still <laughs> very relevant. Is there any sort of, um, on the other side of the algebra, algebraic equation, where actually having this kind of security practice can actually drive productivity or, or Absolutely. even drive revenue, and can you talk about that part of the equation? Yeah, security as an industry, we're, we've gotten a lot smarter. We understand it's not just about the compliance aspect or the data privacy aspects. It's very important to your point. You know, breach prevention is certainly you know, a, a great justification. Uh, it's also about automation. So you think of SOAR, right? Um, providing automation and visibility and dashboard views into who's doing what actually uh, really reduces administrative overhead. We, you know, we want to re allow our clients to repurpose individuals because there are a finite amount of people in the security industry to focus on higher value tasks. Um, so we're enabling just a lot of cost savings through that. Um, self-service is a big piece of this. You know, when you think about security, we bring along a lot of automation self-service, automation of business logic and business process. There's a huge value and cost savings attached to that. Um, so that's huge. That's a huge part of the security conversation. I was reading, you talked about the cybersecurity skills gap and I was reading uh, some interesting numbers that there's 26 million developers in the world, less than <laughs> three million cybersecurity professionals. Yeah. Talk to us about one of your favorite customer stories yeah. where you think CDW and Palo really nailed it in terms of helping organizations drive that value, the top line value, the bottom line value, while enabling them with your expertise. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to focus on one because since we became a Palo authorized training partner, we have worked with over 100 clients. We just started this uh, this year and we've helped over 100 clients and thousands of people um, get enabled on, on Palo Firewall configuration and training and development. So we've, co we've partnered together as, uh, and we've impacted over 100 organizations this year um, in making sure their people are enabled and they're, they're going from that I'm a developer generic to I'm a security professional. So we're helping to close that cybersecurity workforce gap 
Um, and we're just so excited at the scale we've been able to do that in such a short amount of time that, I mean, if you think about next year and the year following, I mean, it's going to be thousands of different clients, but you think about each client, we're, we're, we're holding classes with 30 plus people. So we've already impacted thousands of people, which is amazing. Yeah. Right, so the idea to scale the program in, in calendar year 2023. Absolutely, we're going to, we, we tried it, this was a trial run, and it was amazingly successful trial run. So we're incredibly excited to scale this even more and continue to provide, um, you know, that element, that workforce development element, that training element for uh, the entire Palo stack not Very just nice. elements of it. Excellent. Yeah. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us on thank the program. You. Sharing what great. CDW and Palo Alto Networks are doing together, the what's in it for me from a customer perspective. Big impact there, we appreciate your insights. Thank you so great much. You. Our pleasure. Great to, have, great to be here. Yeah, for our guest and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live and emerging tech coverage.